We're in the courtyard of Somerset House in London and behind us is the installation that we have done for the United Kingdom submission. It's called Forecast and it is a response to the brief that was given to us or all the countries which is utopia by design. I mean everybody in the world knows that the British are completely preoccupied with talking about the weather and as an island nation it is the thing that defines us and certainly as city dwellers it's the nearest that we get to nature. The unpredictability of it is such a fascination to us so we figured that creating something which was like a contraption that was a uh, almost like a weather machine was quite a nice reference to our kind of national uh, identity. Because the courtyard, the, whirl, the wind swirls quite a lot, it's always changing direction and that in a, in a sense is a nice reflection about utopia because utopia doesn't exist. So utopia isn't in one direction, it changes all the time and it changes from person to person. And so we thought it was a very nice abstract way of representing the direction of utopia. We've been working together for 20 years and uh, over that 20 years we have tackled some really really fascinating projects. The majority of the work that we take on is actually um, designed for industrial design or for production, particularly furniture and lighting and so on, but occasionally we get the opportunity to work on some really, um, I guess, groundbreaking experiential projects of which this is one. Um, double space that we did with BMW at the V&A a couple of years ago was another. Uh, and I guess in a way the Olympic torch was um, the first of those. Uh, and those projects are really different from the other work we do because they are not chosen by a customer. They're actually in a way sort of imposed on, uh, on, on, on people, you know, to represent them. The Olympic torch was supposed to represent Great Britain as is this. And so there's a different, it's a whole different approach to that type of work, but we enjoy it a lot because it means we can be more experimental, more conceptual. Obviously we are British, we, we work in London, but it's, it's hard really to define ourselves as British designers, I think, in terms of our work, because uh, most of our work is work we do with manufacturers overseas. We work with manufacturers all over Europe, through Asia, America, and so those products, whilst they maybe originate in London, they have a lot of influence from the countries where they're produced, and then they're sold internationally as well. So I think in the past, when designers worked more closely with local manufacturing, local materials producers, then it was more clear to identify them as national designers. But today I think that's much more confused. Yeah, I think we very much we see ourselves as um, inter international. Internationally uh, inspired, focused, we work internationally. I think it's okay at the very beginning of our you know, early stage of life, you have references that you build up which of course are you know, from your from your local area, from your country or city. But as as you become, you know, more established and you practice more and you travel more, you you're influenced by everything. So consequently, I think that the you know it's very difficult to put a national identity to design work. I think the other thing about being British is that actually, if you look at most corporations around the world that where design is at the heart of the business, you'll find a British trained person there. And I think that's a really that's a real compliment to the art school system that we've had here since the 1950s I mean, the fact that that's generated such an amazing creative output of people, not just British people, but all, all over the world that have come to study here and have gone on to really culturally influence, creatively influence companies in the way that we live today.